While everyone obsesses over whether Sony, Oculus or HTC has the best VR headset, Google and Facebook have been waging a silent platform war. This war of platforms ultimately comes down to the belief that smartphone VR is going to be the primary driver of VR volumes. I've spent the past few months with Daydream, Gear VR and other headsets, but I felt like there is something missing. Instead of watching boring movies, I wanted to interact with the VR world, but a controller just destroys the VR feeling. Now Vico VR has finally finished a full body motion controller which looks similar to Kinect, but is made for mobile VR. So let's see if this device can change the future of the mobile VR industry. While full body tracking is very common in VR, it has not been used for mobile VR yet. Phones just don't have enough processing power, and even if they did, mobile VR setups aren't capable of doing what makes desktop-based experiences so immersive – tracking your body's movement. Vico VR tries to change that with the latest tracker which was launched successfully on Indiegogo. Think of Vico VR like a Microsoft Kinect for your mobile VR setup. You slap it on the table or a shelf and point it at an open space in the room where you will be moving around. For sure you need some space and in my small room there is almost not enough space for it, but it's working fine. Now the company claims that the cameras and sensors are capable of measuring precise 3D coordinates of 19 body joints, which is good enough for tracking your basic movements, but in reality it seems like some more points would be better to have more accurate tracking. The processing power of smartphones is limited, and maybe not enough for real-time tracking. That's why the tracking information is being processed on the tracker itself and streamed to the smartphone over Bluetooth in real-time. So that are the basics, but how does it feel? Well, I'm using the Honor 8 with Full HD in the headset, which was included in the kit. The headset has some good lenses, they are sharp and offer a high field of view, but it does not feel so immersive like um, it does with my Noon VR headset. But also you see more of the scene, it's always a pro and con. For sure a 2K screen or a 4K screen would be better, but if the game is fun, Full HD does the job perfectly fine. But what about the latency? Now the dev cam runs at 30 FPS, so there's the first factor for the latency. Then there is processing and sending over Bluetooth, so the latency is noticeable. It definitely feels not that smooth because of the latency, but it gives you a great feeling in games, because you don't need a stupid controller in your hands and you can fully move your body, which is also a bit exhausting. Slow movements are tracked perfectly fine. But if you start to move fast, you feel the delay a bit and the accuracy is also not the best. So just remember that this is a front-faced sensor. That means when you turn around, your hands and feet, they do kind of funky stuff. You really have to keep this in mind when building your scene. But what about the games? Well, it's not a real plug and play thing, and with that I mean it's not working with all kinds of games in the Play Store. It only works with games which are designed to work with the Vico VR sensor. The company itself provides a few games which are really fun, and some of them have a lot of downloads. But still, the game library is limited. I think in the future there will be more games that work with that controller and also they provide an SDK for the developers. I really wish that I could do more than just playing some games, but unfortunately I'm not a developer. So let's talk about the games. Now you can find the games available through the Vico VR standalone game library or in the Play Store itself. Cool games from ping pong to archery, bowling, boxing and more. So here are some picks I really enjoyed. So first of all, archery. I love shooting guns and bows and this game is a lot of fun and it feels also very real. It's just that movement when you take an arrow out of your quiver. It feels so cool and then the moment when you release the arrow and it hits your target. It's very satisfying. Also I really like ping pong because I played ping pong in a professional club when I was younger. A real cool game. And also all the other games are nice and really cool but to be honest they have no storyline and can get boring fast. I mean that are cool demos but no real games for my taste. But why is mobile VR so important and why will the future be mobile? Now last year alone, Gear VR and Daydream together 
sold 6.7 million devices, while the Rift, Vive and PSVR together only sold close to 1.5 million headsets. The major reason for this discrepancy is the cost. Mobile VR headsets are priced much below the PC counterparts. To run a $700 Rift or HTC Vive, you also need a $1000 PC and only hardcore gamers are likely to have that kind of hardware. Among the things that mobile VR is currently lacking, I feel that positional tracking is the most important one. Now Wiku VR provided the first step which is needed for further development to push the mobile VR industry in the right way. I believe that once Google and Samsung incorporate the feature inbuilt with the headset, it will become huge and mobile VR will be valued at a whole another level. But also eye tracking and hand tracking will be equally valued and play a big role in the VR scene. Now leap motion and other gesture tracking hardware are fairly compact and could be integrated into a mobile VR headset to enable hand tracking in a cool and intuitive way. But let's wait for the future. Alright guys, so we're now here at the end of this video and here comes my quick and final conclusion about mobile VR. So I think personally that mobile VR has a big role in the future. Like you just um, swap in your smartphone, you have a lot of processing power, you have mobile tracking and it replaces HTC Vive and all the VR headsets which are right now on the market, but there is a long way to go. Now regarding that Vico controller, so I think, um, yeah, it's, it's very cool actually and it works pretty good, but it's still the early beginning of the new VR future. So tracking is still not very accurate, I mean it's accurate enough to play all the games, don't get me wrong, but still it doesn't feel that smooth. Also when I played ping pong I couldn't see my real hands and it was like my real hands were on this level and then you know um, the ping pong ball was on this level and it kind of felt strange so I didn't feel so good like in reality. And I think there's still a long way to go, like to play all the games without a controller. Then also, um, this thing, I mean, it's great, but it's very expensive. So you can see the prices down below in the description. I think for this kit, it's around 299. So don't get me wrong, you can get the latest prices down below. And I think that's quite a lot if you're not an early adopter, a dev. Uh, or anything else. So um, for me, um, just to play the demos, I wouldn't say it's worth it. But if you're really an early adopter, if you want to support them, I would definitely pay it. And I mean, you support the development, you support what's going on, but seriously, um, there is no app or no game right now in the market which would me make um, buy this thing. So the demos are cool. If I would have kids, I would probably let them play, but for me as myself, um, yeah, just boxing, shooting, I mean, it's nice for the first time, but gets quite boring. But I think in the future, we'll definitely have um, those trackers, but now we need to see which company makes it. I think Vicovia is on a very good way, and I will have a look at them in the future. And yeah, just some more things. I forgot to mention that this thing has fans, so um, it's very hot right now because my air condition is broken. And then the fans jump on and it's kind of noisy, so, so that is probably the only downside. And it got two USB ports in the back side, so one here for host and one for power. And you just need the power one. The host is probably, I don't know, for development stuff. And yeah, it's a really cool thing. You also get here this VR headset, but also this headset is like um, a bit better Chinese headset. It has some, yeah, some nice leather here. The lenses are good, but still, it's like a $5 headset if you would some buy it from you know, OEMs. But well, also it's kind of cheap, 25 bucks. Well, the noon headset is in my country like 100, but just to feel the few, you really have to think about it. If you have a big smartphone, such a big headset, maybe we'll get the job done. But um, I personally also used a small smartphone, which is the Sony Xperia XC Compact, and it looked strange in the big one. So I had to use the noon VR and got a good field of view. And anything under 720p, just forget it. So, well, that was my experience with mobile VR. Um, I'm not the, the biggest VR fan, but I think that it has really a big role in the future and I'm very excited to be on this trip with you guys. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And yeah, I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day, bye bye.